flute as we know it has only been around since the 1800s. When Theobald Bohm's cylindrical flute marched on the scene in 1847, Richard Wagner famously yelled out, Get those cannons out of my orchestra! But the flute ancestry goes way farther than the 1800s, almost 43,000 years ago in northwestern Slovenia. This flute was made out of a cave bear's femur, which Neanderthals hunted. It's only estimated to be this old, but many archaeologists suggest it could be double that amount. Now a curator at the Slovenian National Museum had a replica made and had Lubin Dimokorski play it. You can check that out in the link in the description below. And wouldn't you know it, it could play whole and half tones of a diatonic scale. Lubin was able to play selections of Beethoven, Verdi, Dvorak, and more. Moving a bit forward, we see the flute growing up, with Renaissance recorders in the 14th century, but still not in the traverse position we're all accustomed to. This came later in the 1600s when the recorder began to decline, and the traverso, the one-keyed flute, came into fashion. One of the last major pieces written before the recorder's hibernation was an otherworldly sound in Gluck's Orfeo and Eurydice. Flute craftsmen at the time, most notably Tromlitz, and others extended the traverse flute's range and evened out its total consistency, making it more appealing than the recorder of the time. But it wasn't until Theobald Boehm in the 1800s that things changed for the flute. It received an all-metal body and its scale even more finely tuned. The flute never looked back. Thanks for watching our first episode. Be sure to subscribe for notifications on new episodes, and if you have an idea for an episode, please write them down in the comment section below.